Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss resolving the many-to-many -many relationship. And in so doing, hopefully, we'll have a full demonstration of all of the tools you need and all of the techniques used to manipulate ER diagrams in the TOAD data modeler. We first begin any activity by opening a new model. Part of the first step in that process is to uh, select a target database. In our case, we're going to choose Oracle 10G, click OK. We're going to expand our model. There is no need to have an overview, so we're going to remove that using the overview selection icon. For our purposes of this uh, presentation, we're going to expand the fonts to be bold and up to 10 points. So here we have our uh, nice desktop. It is common that models run left to right uh, and more so than top down. So uh, one way to make sure that we have the best space available for our work using print setup, go and select landscape, which has already been done here. Click OK. The primary uh, objects of our modeling are entities. You draw entities on your model using the entity icon, which you select, and then you click where you want the entity to be placed. In our case, we're going to have two. One is going to be customer. The other is going to be product. So we have two entities. Now we're going to name them. You change any uh, object in the Toad modeler by double clicking on it. So we're going to have customer. And we're going to add attributes. So we click add. First, we're going to add a key, which automatically sets not null. Our key is going to be a ID, which is not embedded with any specific information. We're also going to add a second attribute, which we're going to make mandatory, uh, which is something uh, that we hope most customers have, and that is their name. So we've set up our customer entity. Now we're going to talk about our product. Again, double click product, uh, capital for the entity name. We're also going to get, give it a primary key called ID. And we're also going to give it an additional attribute name. In any business, this is our basic transaction. There's a, a customer and a product, and we are hopeful that uh, the customer will buy our products. The relationship between customer and product is what we have to deal with next. We want the customer to be able to place orders for one or more products, hopefully more and hopefully often, but we also want each product to be purchased by more than one customer. That establishes a many-to-many -many relationship. To draw the many-to-many -many relationship, uh, we'll choose a relationship icon. In this case, the many-to-many -many or M-to-N icon is the third relationship icon. We click it and draw a line between the two entities that we want to have the many-to-many -many relationship. This introduces a third entity, our junction or transaction uh, entity, which we're going to call order. We want to rename each of the foreign identifying keys so that we can distinguish them. And the technique that's used is to introduce the parent name into the column or attribute name. And we would like to have the column name also appear in the rule. Say OK. We'll do the same for uh, the product ID. And we've got everything set up. So in this relationship, uh, we uh, know that a customer may or may not have set up an order with us as yet. So we can uh, make the relationship optional. So the customer places an order with us, and an order is placed 
by a customer. And we see that the relationship is correct in that we know that every order is placed by only one customer. And as we had hoped for, the customer would have zero, one or more orders. Well, let's take a closer look at the relationship between product and order. We see that each product appears on one or more orders, but to our dismay, an order as currently modeled can only have one product, which of course can be really problematic when you are checking a customer out and you'd like to complete the transaction. And basically you have to tell them they have to place a separate order for each product they want. As with any many to many relationship, when you're done introducing that relationship, you should check each relationship to confirm it is not hiding a many-to-many. -many. In our case, order and product is in fact a many-to-many -many relationship. So we can stop at this point, get rid of that relationship as we've drawn it, and introduce a second many-to-many -many relationship. This fourth entity is referred to uh, appropriately as the order item. And we correct the uh, attribute so that it properly reflects the uh, name of uh, where it's being uh, provided from. So let's recheck our new relationships. Each order has one or more order items and typically, especially at, at creation, it's an optional relationship. So for each order we have zero, one, or more order items. So we change the optionality relationship with the child or order item. We're going to put in some kind of description of these relationships. An order contains zero, one or more order items and an order item uh, is contained in one and only one order. Each product appears on one or more order items. Well, we have products before we have orders. So each order item specifies a product and a product is specified on zero, one or more order items. In the entity order, which is currently uniquely identified with customer ID, the problem that presents is that each customer can only place one order because they aren't differentiated. So we have to add a differentiation. And as you'll find in a production environment, you'll have a unique identifier for orders. So there's an order number. You'll also find that you always have a date time, at least one for when it's being placed. And you'll also find, uh, now that we've made that change, that the relationship between customer and order is no longer identifying, i.e. the customer uh, ID is not part of the information that makes each order unique. So we have uh, updated the structure of an order. It has a unique ID, there's a, a place for date and time, and there's a place to indicate which, or, which customer placed the order. That affects our order item as well. The order 
item is identified by which order it's on. So we update the uh, foreign key to represent uh, which order it's on, clearly identifying that. And we're going to add what's more com common for identification is a number or line number for the order item. And it's that number that is part of the uniquely identifying information. So not only is it identified by which order it's on, but also by its position on a given order. With this update of order item, the product ID no longer needs to be a part of the identifying information, and it, it becomes a foreign key and we have our updated relationship. Now that we've resolved our many-to-many -many relationship, we have to put our finishing touches on our order customer product model. One of the glaring missing parts of this model is the ability to allow an order to specify more than one of each product. To update this model, we want to add quantity to order item. And we specify it as not null because we expect one or more to be provided as a value. Putting the attributes in order, uh, we can use the arrows, move quantity above foreign keys, primary foreign keys, primary key, other attributes, and foreign keys. In addition to the entities and relationship components of the diagram, you should also have a full set of notes. This would include a title for your model. It should also include a full set of relationship sentences. We have three relationships here. There should be three sets of relationship sentences. Each customer places zero, one, or more orders each order item specifies only one product. Last but not least, make sure you save your modeling work. And that concludes our presentation.